Joining me now is super wordsmith and broadcaster Kel Richards. Kel, thank you for joining us. I discussed Labor's misinformation and disinformation bill last night on the show. But can you explain for us the difference between the two terms? Well, I, I can, uh, and I think they're both really badly formed words. Disinformation means a deliberate lie. <laughs> telling something which is not the truth. Misinformation means repeating something which is wrong, but doing so innocently because you, you believed it. The problem is the core meaning of both is the same. It just means false. And in fact, when it comes to information, there's not one category of information. There are four categories of information. There's truth, there's true, false, uh, disputed and opinion. So this is a bill which is claiming to deal with information and is dealing with one category of information. It's a, they're badly constructed words because disinformation and misinformation both contain the word information while trying to negate it. And it's just, it's, it's an infantile bill, quite frankly, when it will not look at what information actually is and the categories it actually fits into. Badly constructed words and a terribly constructed bill. Kel, yes, yes. viewer Adam asks us, what is the origin of the expression licked into shape? Comes from a medieval superstition. Back in the Middle Ages in England, still lots of bears roaming in the wild. It's why bear baiting was so popular in medieval England. Uh, and they'd noticed that when a baby bear was born, its mother would lick it and lick it furiously for a long time. And the medieval superstition was little baby bears were born with no shape whatsoever and their mothers literally licked them into shape. Isn't that a lovely superstition? It's very quaint, isn't it? <laughs> That's really charming. It's lovely. Jeff asks us, when a politician is accused of astroturfing, what precisely are they said to have done? Well, AstroTurf is fake grass. Um, so it was invented for the Astrodome in Houston, in Texas. Uh, so when they're AstroTurfing, they're trying to present a movement as being a grassroots movement from the people, when in fact it's not. It's just them and their mates pushing their burrow once again. So any political movement which actually comes from the activists but pretends to come from the people is pretending to be grassroots. It's actually AstroTurfing. That one could come in handy. Another <laughs> expression that viewer Greg wondered about, particularly while he was doing his taxes this year, is the expression to pay through the nose. What's the origin of that one? Uh, the short answer, Amanda, is I wish we knew. They're all, it's, it's been in English since uh, oh, 1666, but its origin is a bit mysterious. Where does it come from? Might come from the fact that we get nosebleeds, we bleed through the nose, we bleed a lot of money. Uh, it might come from the word rhino, which is the old Greek Latin word for nose, and that used to be a slang for money. There is also a theory that when the Vikings were raiding 8th century Island, they demanded payment for all the, from all the local farmers, and anyone who didn't pay, they got the knife and slit their their nose, a bit like that, that old movie. Oh, uh, so, yes. Now, any of those might be true. The problem is the linguists have done the research and they can't settle it. So, so the, the story, I'm sorry, sorry, is that in language, there's not always an answer, origin unknown. Oh, we're allowed to have occasional mysteries. It got me thinking <laughs> about the ancient Egyptians and the way they would mummify by pulling certain organs out through Ooh, the nose. Yes, Kel, yes. thank you so much for your research and your time tonight. Absolute delight to have you with me. Thanks again.